You're watching Act TV. I'm Juliana Forlano. As the fourth estate, the media has a responsibility to expose fault where it lives. This is the ultimate, you know, one of the most important things we have going that we need them to do now as we struggle to deal with the pandemic and its economic fallout. So why is the New York Times placing the blame for COVID's rapid spread on the wrong leaders? Alternate's Josh Holland is with us today to discuss. Hey, Josh, how's it going? Hi, Juliana. How are you? Eh. Yeah, yeah, we're all eh. <laughs> Your recent piece is a response to the New York Times article about how the governors have responded to the pandemic. First, can you tell people who may not have had time to read that article what the New York Times was saying and then talk about what it, why it bothered you so much? All right. So we're in, uh, we're not in the second wave because we never got the first wave control. So this is wave, I call it wave 1.5. Um, it, it is a, a result clearly of states opening up prematurely um, when there was insufficient testing and contact tracing and, and cases were not declining uh, to the degree that the CDC had, had specified. So they basically reopened over the objections of public health experts, most public health experts. And um, the New York Times ran a piece um, on, I believe it was Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, I don't know when it was. Um, but it, it basically said that it is becoming increasingly clear that governors um, miscalculated and um, reopened prematurely. And now we are reaping the whirlwind for that. And the thing that I found so frustrating about this piece is, is, is pretty straightforward. I, I, was, I was not trying to, first of all, defend governors because there are a, a lot of governors Florida. who have done a, an awful job and they deserve <laughs> criticism, right? I mean, yeah, Florida, uh, Georgia, every, everywhere where you see cases spiking now, um, has been marked by terrible governance. And, and, and I, with all due fairness, um, there was a follow-up piece that showed that regardless of how states voted in 2016, since Memorial Day, those run by Republican governors are seeing their cases increasing dramatically. Those run by Democratic governors are, are actually, as a whole, as a group, declining. Um, so... So I'm just so saying, if you don't want to, to die, you might want to vote for a Democrat. <laughs> and I wasn't, so again, I wasn't trying to defend any governors per se. The, the, thing, uh, the thing that really troubled me about this piece, and there were a few, few issues, but I'll cut to the really big problem, is that um, the Senate, the Republican Senate and Donald Trump, coerce states into reopening by not including any assistance to state governments in the nearly $3.7 trillion that they've doled out in uh, relief funding for the coronavirus. So uh, it was basically they had a strategy very early on that they were going to um, call for states and pressure states to reopen. Um, because they judged that it was better to um, to kickstart the economy to the degree it was possible for their electoral prospects in November. And they wanted to also spread the blame for that uh, calculation to governors if it went south, which it, it has gone south. So... Um, by not by not mentioning that we had this massive fight just last month about aid to state governments, um, the the House, which is controlled by Democrats, passed a relief bill that had a trillion dollars to help state governments deal with the budget crunches that they're dealing with, um, and the Republicans in the Senate had just were steadfast in their refusal to. Um, to, to pass a similar measure in the Senate. Mm -hmm. So um, basically states are getting absolutely crushed. And I should point out the states have limited ability to borrow. So the federal government can go and just run deficits, not a big deal. States are really have like, they are caught between a rock and a hard place. They are not getting any kind of assistance from um, the federal government 
uh, while their while their health care costs are going up and and other costs, social social safety net costs are going up, and their and their tax revenues are just are are being decimated. So, um, uh, I made the point that 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 Governor Cuomo and and Mayor Bill De Blasio are talking about the lack of revenue coming in. And they're basically going to be doing austerity measures on yeah. the state workers. They're doing exactly what Trump would love for, you know, to be able to do himself. Just basically cut government workers, cut all libraries, public schools, parks, anything that's nice for the people. You know, the Democratic government is of our state is actually doing on their own and then blaming Trump for not giving him the money. Why can't our state especially New York. I know you're in New York also. Yeah. You know, why can't they just put like a five cent tax on trades or why can't they tax the real estate moguls who are making so much? Why can't they adjust in that way? Why must they? Well, I mean, we have, we have state, you know, we have state um, income taxes. We could increase income taxes. Uh, I mean, well, increase it on the, uh, the wealthy. I mean, the people who can afford yes. it. I feel like my well, you income could do a taxes are There's lots of ways that you could that you could raise additional revenues. I mean, one of the pro- there, and there's a so couple. Why of are problems. these Democrats cutting it, doing the austerity that Trump would have loved to done himself? Well, I, I think we probably have to look state by state. You know, I mean, um, I'm talking in, about this in in New York. I mean, Cuomo has had a famously hostile, tense relationship with public sector unions, and I, it's very likely he wants to make some of these cuts. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know that that's true in, in every blue state. I, I don't think it is, but all states are facing this, this, um, this cash crunch. Um, at some point, you know, the, the difference is that, yes, you can, you can raise state taxes. I, I mean, one of the other points that I think I made in the piece that I think is really important is that, again, without defending governors per se, this is a national crisis and we've had zero coordinated federal response to this. I mean, re- really, we just, the federal government has been um, AWOL. Why do you think his administ- Trump's administration has been really so insistent about not helping the states? States' rights? I mean, why? Do you know why? I mean, I think that it, it is, it, I think it was it's exactly what I, I mentioned earlier. I think that they were trying to, you know, Trump said, I'm going to reopen this country. And everybody said, oh, you don't have any authority to do that. These are state decisions. And, um, you know, this was, this was a way of forcing their hand. Hmm. If you provided aid, then, you know, they could, they could op- reopen at a slower pace. They could you know, keep lockdowns in place longer. Um, and, and I also think that the, the fundamental strategy was to say, we on the federal government, on the federal level, we're for opening up the economy and then blame, especially blue state governors for, um, for pushing back for, for the, the economic, um, fallout by saying, look, we, we've been wanting to reopen the economy. They didn't. So they created this tension. Um, and, and it was a false, it was a false choice, of course. I mean, let's all keep in mind that the, you know, we know from evidence from the 1918 pandemic that communities that locked down and got a hold of the public health crisis had um, shorter economic downturns and quicker recoveries. So our choice has always been let the pandemic um, rage out of control and face deeper economic misery that lasts longer, or um, you know mitigate the 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 outbreak and recover quicker, more quickly. So it, it's always been this this false dichotomy between um, the economy on the one hand and public health on the other. They're inextricably interwoven, and and people will are not going to you know. Uh, our economy can rebound to a degree. It, it will never be able to get back to um, the pre-pandemic normal until people feel safe mm. going out and spending money. Because it's a, you know, it's a, con- consumer, um, consumers drive a, a, a 
great deal of our economic activity. So if you're not comfortable going down to, you know, Applebee's or whatever and, and taking the family. I'm never on comfortable a, going to Applebee's. <laughs> well, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm not going to take an air, I'm not going to get on an airplane until no. I, I don't know when. Right. No. And I, and I'm, and I, that's my thing. Like that's what I spend money on. I, I live a pretty frugal life and I personally, like I'm addicted to, as you, you know, I'm into scuba diving. Right. So yeah. I, that's my thing. Every year I try to go on four scuba you trips. You don't have to go to the Great Lakes. You can get there on by car. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out some diving that I can do by car. Yes, I am trying to do, but that's not the same and it, and it won't cost the same. So I'll spend significantly less money um, on, on my, you know, my preferred hobby this year. I love and, that. And, and that's going to be the same, you know, for everybody. If, you, if you're not comfortable, um, you know, taking your your kids to go visit your parents or whatever, or staying you. in a staying in a hotel, if you're not comfortable doing all those things, um, we can, you know, we can recover to a degree, but we'll we'll never be able to get back to to full um, pre-pandemic economic activity until there's we been a lot of talk about. You know how Trump's election pro re-election prospects depend on having a good economy. That was his whole thing. And now, you know, it seems like blaming the governors is a way for him to avoid responsibility uh, for the crashing economy that we're living through. Yeah, I mean, I think that was always the um, intent. And um, I don't I, I've never thought that it was a, a sound strategy. I mean, you know, yeah. this, this guy. Um, thinks he can wish away the pandemic and its effects, including its economic How effects. in God's name has he not caught it yet? There's people all around him with it. He's got, he's fat, obese, you know, he's unhealthy. I mean, it's simple. Old. You know how he slowed down the testing for all of us? Well, he's yeah. ramped up the testing for him. There was a piece last week, I don't remember the publication, about um, how much uh, effort the, the the Secret Service and White House officials are taking to protect him. So everybody in t contact with him is getting multiple tests. Um, you know, the testing is very high and, and contact tracing. Everything that we should be doing for everybody, uh, for everybody <laughs> is being done around the White House. So how uh, can we work to get, you know, the, to keep the media with their feet to the fire about holding the right of officials accountable for what's going on here well you know it's a it's been frustrating and that's you know it's part of a larger conversation of course the media their um their conventions i like uh, how we say they because we're not part of it <laughs> well everybody <laughs> does that fine job okay everybody does that everybody does that yes um the the legacy press the legacy media yeah. Um, has certain conventions that make it in, incapable of um, accurately conveying what's going on in this country today, because we have a um, a, a venal, uh, mendacious crackpot reality TV star running the country, ostensibly running the country. I should say it's not clear to me uh, whether yeah. uh, whether he is actually in charge, and um, a party that has um, just. Uh, descended into, um, you know, conspiracy theories. And it's, it's the, the Alex Jonesification of the Republican party is a, a big story. And it's, and it's, you know, the, the traditional way of approaching these things for the mainstream press is to offer both sides of the story. And, you know, well, we don't do that here on a TV. Certain amount we of offer victory. one side of the story. Go get the other side someplace else. <laughs> a certain <laughs> amount of deference to the uh, office of the presidency, et cetera, et cetera. There's an assumption. There's a presumption of, of normality, which is hard to overcome. Because uh, nothing is normal. I mean, everything is in insane. Fukakta. So. Is that? That's not yeah. swearing, right? I'm trying. <laughs> I don't know. I thought we were allowed to swear. We are. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I'm Fukakta, trying to clean it up fine, because Fukakta. my kid watches these now. She thinks uh, it's someone on Twitter the other day was like, "You should really clean." I was like, mm, "Sorry, I can't do that." Can't maybe do when, it. maybe when there's a vaccine, <laughs> <laughs> I'll consider it. A vaccine for not swearing. <laughs> I'll be so I'll I'll be rejoicing at going back to you know some semblance of normal life. Well, what's coming up on We've Got Issues this week? 
Um, uh, this week, we're going to actually talk about the Seattle um, occupation zone that was broken up yesterday and, um, and, and the larger kind of strategy of occupying um, public spaces and, 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 and New York as well. It's been done in several st cities and, and uh, as an extension of the Occupy movement. The cops from, just did a beatdown on them uh, this morning. Did yeah, they, yeah. They, they're, that's what tends to happen. Yeah, that's, that's what happened with the Occupy movement as well, right? It was just like brutally suppressed. And we'll be talking to uh, Dave Nywert, the great- Oh yeah, he's been on this show, yeah, sure. Yeah, he's terrific. And he's Seattle-based. He's um, uh, one of the premier reporters on the far fringes of the of the right wing. So we'll, it's always, he's always good. He's not on the right wing. He reports on the fringes. I bless that man yes. for being able to even look at that stuff in the eye all day long. You yes. know, and he, he he deals with death threats all the time and stuff like that. I know. It's yeah. Good. Well, anyway, so that's good. We'll watch that. Uh, we've got issues. It comes out on Friday, or you can listen on Friday, right? You put it out. It in the comes out on Friday. On it comes out. Uh, it'll be up tonight at midnight. Yeah. yeah. So if you're staying up late, or if you're in another time zone. Yeah. Get, we've got issues wherever you get podcasts. You can get more Josh Holland, or you can get him right here on Act TV every other Thursday. Thanks for joining us, Josh. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Julia.